Devilfish is a 1984 horror film from director Lumberto Bava under the pseudonym John Old Jr. The movie opens with, wait, Monster Shark? Oh, this is one of those movies with 50 names, isn't it? Anyway, the movie opens with a guy underwater feeding turtles. Not really the first thing that comes to mind when you think Devilfish, but uh, okay. We then cut to the Coast Guard finding a capsized boat. Somehow, I don't think the guardsman jumping in the water would sound like this. What, is this their first day on the job? They find a guy in the water who may still be alive. I think he's gonna be okay. Oh. Oh, no. Meanwhile, dolphins. This is Dr. Stella Dickens. You know she's doing important work because she looks concerned and has a clipboard. The aquarium tour guide takes the guests to see the dolphins. What do you do exactly? I talk to fish. Over in the Seaquarium boat, Dr. Hogan is being a jerk to this tiny shark. Can't properly conduct ocean-bound research without beer. He keeps drinking until he starts hearing weird noises. What? It usually takes me five or six of these before I start hearing things. He records this bizarre noise, which really seems to upset the dolphins. Stella can't figure out what's wrong, so she climbs in this raft knowing full well she's gonna fall in. Yep. Bob realizes whatever he's hearing is on a collision course with the boat. It knocked over the Budweiser! This is serious! Nothing really happens, though. Over at the coroner, he's looking into the cause of death. You see here? I think it may have been murder. The sequel to Mr. No Legs is not what I was expecting. He explains to the officers that he thinks it was some kind of giant shark or perhaps something else. GNC cop doesn't know what to think. The guy's mother wants to see the body, but Officer Cortez ain't got time for that. I want to see my Tommy. Not now, Chief. I'm in the fucking zone. Stella is very upset about the dolphins. Hey, they almost killed me, Bob. Well, that's kind of on you. Why did he think it was a good idea to get off the pier? Bob says they need to call in Peter to help. Over at Peter's, Sandra is playing Sequest on the Atari 2600. Wow, graphics will never get better than this. Peter runs an electronics repair shop. He's upset that Sandra's playing games instead of fixing a broken monitor. He pokes at it for two seconds, and it's still broken? The only thing that's screwed up, honey lamb, is your head. Hmm? Mm, that's because you're a genius. That's what it looks like when it's fixed? He's leaving on vacation, and Sandra's staying back to watch the store. Apparently, he's got big plans. Because there's about three gorgeous ladies waiting for me in New York. He's going to leave, but gets stopped by Stella. She convinces him to delay his vacation to build her some custom equipment. Well, not so much as convince as drop it in his lap and assume he'll do it. What is this, a building for ants? Dr. Davis is busy doing science when he's interrupted by Sonia. One of Davis's co-workers, Florinda, sees them fooling around. Maybe don't stand in front of a window if you don't want to get caught. Peter and Sandra build a pulse generator for Stella. He explains why he's willing to do this. If you think I'm doing this because Stella has a cute little ass, that's exactly right. Sandra then goes for the block, and it's good! Florinda calls Davis to tell him she's going to the press to tell them all about his affair. Florinda's getting ready to leave when she hears the doorbell. Hello, ma'am, I'm here for murder. Miller then gives her a vigorous neck massage. Oh, right there, that's where all the tension is. She's so relaxed, he puts her in for a nice bath. He also does this. Over at Peter's, he's saying all the right things. You're luscious and juicy and tender. And also asleep. Just then he hears someone breaking into the shop. The bad guys are smashing up the thing he just built. He fights off Rich Voss and the other guy before he gets a brutal neck punch from Miller. These guys go to investigate the shark rumors. There are sharks in your swimming pool pretty soon. <laughs> Don't go giving the asylum any ideas. Ah, too late. One guy goes into the water with a harpoon gun. It's okay. I saw this in that Jaws video game. He's then attacked by a shark. <laughs> Not exactly the fearless shark hunters. Certainly no Ian Zeering. The duo then get eaten by the monster shark. The sheriff figured out that Florinda was murdered. They go to tell her boss, Professor West, what happened. The camera focuses on Professor West's watch, which means that he was the guy who called in the murder. Wait, so Florinda sees Dr. Davis fooling around with Professor West's wife, so he has her killed? I'm sensing red herring. This little kid's about to be traumatized for life. 
over in town, I'm pretty sure this is the same one they used in Island Claws. Mutant sharks and giant crabs? I think it's time to move. This one guy's still alive, so they rush him to the hospital. Then the doctor kills him. Quick! They have a cast made from the wound, and it comes up looking like a giant tooth. Over at the pier, Peter's going out to search for the monster shark with Stella and Bob. Stella makes a pass at Peter. I like the color of your eyes. Oh, and I like your cute little... Uh, never mind. Bob just can't stop drinking on the job. He throws a can overboard, which then wakes up the shark. Is this thing like Biolanti? Here Stella's auditioning for the Duran Duran Rio video. Bob sees the shark, and we see Peter's, um, Peter. They manage to record the shark, which is making a completely different sound than last time. Peter somehow figures out it's not a shark. The monster decides not to ram them, so they celebrate. They play the audio for Dr. Davis and Professor West. Back at the aquarium, how does Bob have the tooth? Bob calls Dr. Bates and tells her to come to Florida to investigate Rota sharks. Meanwhile, miscellaneous monster shark food. You know what she had the nerve to say? You know what she said? So I says to Mabel, I says, the shark has tentacles. It's Tokyo Fish Attack. Dr. Bates is showing some prehistoric fish. 320 years ago, new forms of fish developed. Fish with teeth. Hold on. Fish only developed teeth 320 years ago? 320 years ago, new forms of fish developed. Fish with teeth. She shows them the mouth of the proto-shark, which matches up with what they have. And I fed the results of my examination into the computer. Since this is a computer from 1984, you should have the results in about 35 years. The sheriff comments that he wants to kill the fish. Miller goes to see Sandra. Seems she was in on letting the bad guys in to smash the fish tracking equipment. Did they really need a plant in an electronics shop? The team builds some new and improved shark monitoring devices. These tiny speakers play Papa Don't Preach on a constant loop, which should scare the shark off. Since they've been working for five minutes, Bob wants beer. you think these dots would line up better. Stella and Peter go to investigate the broken probe. The two then go to shore for some sexy time. This reminds me of a joke. Why don't women drink beer on the beach? Because they get sand in their schlitz. The shark's getting close to the boat, which they see on their underwater camera. See it? Yes. It might be him, but the picture isn't very clear. Oh, sure, it might be some other giant prehistoric shark. We changed camera angles. How did we do that? Bob goes to shoot it and gets eaten. Dr. Bates almost becomes fish food, but manages to fight it off. Peter and Stella arrive to find Bob dead and Bates traumatized. Peter comes up with a way to attract the shark so they can kill it. The computer then tells them the fish is made of coo. Gotta poop. Oh, dear God, I gotta poop. The sheriff decides he's going to set up some bait loaded with explosives to blow up the shark. Peter and Stella head out to the ocean. Bates is on board? She was almost eaten this afternoon. I think I'd be getting as far away from the water as possible. The sheriff loads up the state-mandated explosives and M60 machine gun. Miller gets a call to kill everyone. Cortez tells the sheriff that Sandra's been killed. The Coast Guard leaves bombs all over the place. Peter and Stella go to attach the speaker to the boat. Miller shows up and murders Bates. Jeez, survived a prehistoric monster fish attack only to be killed by a low-rent henchman. Peter's fighting off a bad guy when another bad guy accidentally shoots his buddy with a harpoon. He then gets eaten by the shark. Peter rescues Stella from Miller. Not exactly the deep ocean, considering you can see the bottom. The monster, again, eats the bad guy. I think the monster shark might be on the good side. This reminds me of that scene in Ed Wood with Bela Lugosi and the octopus. The professor discovers the cells from the monster can reproduce. So if they blow it up, they'll have hundreds of them. The sheriff heads out to blow up all the explosive buoys. Aren't they a little too close for this? The professor discovers classified info on Project Sea Killer. Maybe they should have called it something less obvious. Why did 80s movies always think computers would talk to us like someone with a head injury? The sheriff manages to blow up the last explosive before the monster can eat it. The professor discovers Dr. Davis is responsible. He confronts him and, uh, uh-oh. The duo tries to explain how it's profitable that they created a giant sea monster. Look, from a woman who has the sensitivity of a slut. Damn! The professor then explains that Sonya 
gave the two of them identical watches. Oh, there's the plot twist. The sheriff shows up and shoots Davis. The professor explains the monster can only be killed by fire. So they go to lure it to the surface and burn it. Peter lures the fish puppet straight into the trap. Yeah, we're going to do untold damage to the environment. He crashes the boat and gets away just in time. Suddenly, it's nighttime. The shark then goes on a feeding frenzy. How is a 40-foot-long shark-octopus hybrid being stealthy? Oh, if only Mr. Suki was here. I will care. They pour out the gas and torch the monster. Who wants calamari? The next day, Peter's finally going on vacation. Only this time, Stella's going with him. I'm finally getting my vacation. Where are we going? Oh, to the mountains. <laughs> 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 Everyone we know is dead! The movie was shot mostly in the Florida Keys, while the ending was shot in Italy. Actor Michael Sopkiv signed on with a group of Italian filmmakers to do four films shot internationally and made to cater to an American audience. The first was the post-apocalyptic film 2019, after the fall of New York, and the second was the action film Blast Fighter in 1984. The third was Devilfish, a film that was made to take advantage of the Animals Attack films, or in this case, Jawsploitation. With an international cast, many of the actors spoke little or no English. This didn't matter because they dubbed everyone's dialogue in post. In Italy, they had a stable of English-speaking voice actors who were able to translate the dialogue to fit in what the characters were saying. In some scenes, there were actors speaking multiple languages, which is why Michael Sopkiv often looked confused. In 2019, Sopkiv co-starred with French model Valentine Monnier. They brought her back for Devilfish, and neither actor was aware they'd be working together again until they were on set. There was a lot of confusion over the film because it had different titles in different areas. Monster Shark and Devilfish were the most common, but it was also known as Shark, Shark Red in the Ocean, Devouring Waves, Red Ocean, Apocalypse in the Red Ocean, Shark Blood in the Ocean, In the Shark's Teeth, and even more. The aquarium scenes were shot in an aquarium in Miami. They were able to rent the large boat from the Seaquarium. They were also able to work with the Coast Guardsmen to film the footage of the boats in the helicopter. While most versions of the film were the same despite the name, the US theatrical version was different. They recut the film so the couple that dies about halfway through gets killed in the beginning. That way the movie starts off with more of a jump. It also had a lot less nudity than the European cut. Dr. Bates was played by Darla Warner, the wife of one of the American producers. Despite the movie being a somewhat simplistic Jaws ripoff, it still had seven writers, one of which was the Italian exploitation director Sergio Martino, working under the pseudonym Martin Dolman. They hired actual amputees to play the victims of the Devilfish. Devilfish isn't the most well-known of the Jaws ripoffs, but at least it did a few things different. It wasn't a shameless knockoff like Cruel Jaws or Great White. It had a shark-octopus hybrid, which was later lifted for the film Sharktopus. The monster shark was pretty unique looking, and they knew just to show a few snippets of it, so we never get a good enough look at the giant puppet. Michael Sopkiv and Valentine Monnier worked really well together, and I'm sad they didn't do it again. This film easily could have had a sequel, but I think by 84, the shark craze had just about moved on. Devilfish. It's prehistoric Jaws meets Surat Sakadoji. Say what you will about the film, but it has a charm, and dare I say, quality, that puts it above 99% of the bizarre shark movies we get today. Thank you.